welcome those who are on the various platforms of Zoom on YouTube. Tonight we are here at the beginning of the, the series of Crusade Prophetic Hope and I want to ensure all of us that this will be a very good time that we would spend in God's Word. The programs as we go as we know, we are going Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night is off, and we come back on Friday night. But I'm going to give you just some of the topics as we go. On Tuesday night, we're going to have Brother Elvin Allen, and he will tell us about the greatest rescue mission that you cannot miss. The greatest rescue mission. On Monday night, we're going to have the Dwayne Farrell, and he will be delving into the great controversy, and we know that we're all part of the great controversy, and he will be delving into that. And tonight, Sunday night, the opening night of our crusade, and the Carlisle Ford is going to tell us how to know the future, how to know the future. I want to encourage all of us to be here online. Encourage your friends, your neighbors, those who are here, and even those who are on platform. Bring your friends, give them the link. Let them know what is going on here at the per, at Prophetic Hope. They are also going to have some gifts nightly. And as visitors come and as you bring your friends, there will be some gifts that will be given out. So we are going to have a very good time as we continue the series. This is our first night. And I want, <coughs> excuse me, to see as we grow and grow as we continue into God's word. At this time, we are going to have our item of special music. Okay. All right, from the item of special music, where we're going to ask the choristers to come back on and give us some more of their singing. We'll continue with as the deer, as the deer panted for the water, so, so my soul panted for reading.
everyone. It is my pleasure this evening to introduce you to Sister Waldron, Kane Waldron, who is the health leader of our church here at Caneville. She's a registered nurse by profession, married, mother of two children, the wife of one husband, and she will bring the health teacher for this evening. She will be ready, very educated with the topic that we will hear her give to us. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Sister Silver. Pleasant good night to everyone. <laughs> Tonight's topic is called listening to your body. Before I actually start, I just want to say a special blessing to all fathers. Happy Daddy's Day. All right, I hope you have a beautiful day. Okay. Listening to your body. Matthew 13, 9 says, who has ears to hear, let him hear. When we consider a good, healthy outlook, we generally speak about your mind, your body, your spirit, and the environment also plays a role dealing with your mind. After having a greater awareness about mental health, I found many people do not pay significant attention to this, nor were they ever interested in this topic. It has always been a thought that that type of thing can never happen to me, or maybe that's something that always happens to somebody else. The reality is, if your brain isn't ticking the correct way, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Remember the story of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel's time? He was at the pinnacle of his life. Then one day, he just turned out to be a lunatic, completely lost his mind, total meltdown. It needs to be understood that this can happen to anyone, despite your gender, status, and even your age. Recently, due to many imposed restrictions, we have been feeding on a lot of fear, anger, frustration, and loads of confusion, and limited social interaction, and the unawareness to some, allowing to various media platforms to actually dictate how we should live our life or even feel. What has your mind been telling you? Some have been experiencing increased headaches. Is this from the crisis that we are facing right now? Increased workload, spending hours in front of the computer? Are you having an inability to think clearly? Are you having overwhelming feelings more than usual? Is there poor focus on any tasks that you perform? Is there an inability to actually tolerate simple situations or having a shortened fuse? These are only a few signs of mental experiences, which can cause a damper on your health, if not well managed. How can you actually manage mental fatigue? Take a mental break. Find your quiet place. Go out in your gallery, the backyard, go on the beach, the park, any place that gives you solitude. Another area you could actually journal. Journal your feelings. Express yourself to the maximum without anyone having to pass judgment on you. Of course, you can speak to a trusted individual that you could actually relate to. Do what children do best. Run around, play games, and play with a pet, of course. Personally, I find that dogs are very good listeners. Have a good, hearty laugh. When last have you actually laughed till the tears actually flowed? Hmm? Plus, it's also one of the cheapest forms of medicine you could actually find. 
a lot of day in the week when all of the family members in your household could actually sit for dinner. I find that some children actually look forward to this event as they're on it, well, they're able to unfold their feelings without any form of prejudice. You're dealing with your body. What is your body telling you? Are you an individual who is full of energy as you rise on mornings? Or are you constantly tired? Are you falling asleep during work or even when you're driving on your way to work? How is your vision of late? As a diabetic or hypertensive individual, are your eyes increasingly getting cloudy? Are you having tunnel vision? Are you experiencing pain at the back of your eyes? Are you listening? How do you feel after climbing up a flight of steps? I mean, honestly, how do you feel actually climbing up a flight of steps? How to win, short of breath? Is your chest hurting you? Or worse yet, when you're actually quiet in your bed, do you actually have crouching chest pains? Do you find that night after going to bed that you visit the toilet at least five to six times where there's just a small stream of flow? You're in white, that is. Can you actually fit into any clothing that you purchased over five years ago, or three years, or even two? Can you easily tie your shoelaces? I can tell you all the time when I realized that I really needed to start exercise. I tried to bend down to tie my shoelaces and I recognized that I was out of breath. I even related this to a colleague of mine and she said, girl, I don't even bother. I just stick the shoelaces in my shoe and go. How are your feet feeling? Do you have a tingling sensation at the bottom of your feet or your toes? Are they feeling numb? All of these questions I have asked are various signals that we need to listen to. How to manage this? Step one, you need to go and see a doctor. Seriously. Spiritual health. What is, what is your spiritual claim? Matthew 6.24 says, no man can serve two masters. For either he would hate the one and love the other, or he would hold on to the one and he would despise the other. You cannot serve two masters. Who is your God, truthfully? Are you listening and connecting with God daily? And I don't mean, yeah, God. Um, right now, I see a bag that I shot and I would really like it. I would really like to get that car. But let me tell you, this car here gave me real stress. I mean, are you really connecting with God? Are you opening that spiritual door to suck with God? Are you asking him daily to be with you as a guy? Are you taking the time to open the scriptures and inviting the Holy Spirit to meditate or mediate and give you understanding? Are you asking God to apply his word in your life and that not one day is past or wasted? Are you listening? Are you listening to, to the really Holy Spirit? In our environment, this also plays a role in maintaining optimal health. An atmosphere which is tidy and free from clutter, which allows the breeze to flow freely can always be a comfort zone. This is not always possible. What is the action plan for this? Go outside, sit in the veranda, sit underneath a tree. After all, it is mango season. Stop yarding in the long grass. Try to plant two potatoes instead. We need to recognize the beauty outside 
rather than being tormented by the four cemented walls that we have at home. Take a walk. Matthew 28, 6, 18, sorry, says, and Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Christ is the head of the church. As children who have the desire to be with the master are aspiring to do so, we should follow the perfect command and excellent examples that Jesus had left for us. If we only allow ourselves to ingest the impurities of this world constantly, our minds become trapped and we are unable to think clearly. What did Jesus do? He kept focus. How did he do this? He prayed. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 to 17 says, do, not, do you not know that you are a temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? If any man destroys the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, and that is what you are. Our bodies are the temples of God that he has loaned us. It is our duty to care for these temples by good practices through eating well and maintaining good physical activity. The church is the body of Christ. We are the representatives to be used for the good of his service. I once heard that the abundance of life is expressing our gratitude in and for everything. Are you listening? I mean, really, are you listening to the body? Have a blessed night. Thank you very much, Rhonda. I know we will hear from our pastor, Pastor Winston Cook. I'm delighted tonight to introduce to you the speakers for this Prophetic Hope series. And as I introduce them, you'll get to meet them for the first time and others you'll see as we go on. The speakers are Deacon Alvin Allen. Amen. 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 Deacon Michael Charles. Amen. 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 Elder Collis Cox. Elder Jason Cry, Elder Dwayne Farrell, Elder Carlisle Ford, and Elder Tyrone Taylor, who is at one of the downlink down sites making sure that it is managed tonight. You will meet him as the series go on. Tonight's speaker is Elder Carlisle Ford. Elder Ford is a family man. He's married to Andrea. And together they have two sons, Jonathan and Justin. He has taken advantage of our educational system here in Barbados. And he was schooled at the Commonwealth Secondary School, the Barbados Community College, and the University of West Indies. Some of his hobbies are music appreciation and DIY. And in case you do not know what the DIY is, I didn't know either until my children educated me, do it yourself. <laughs> do it yourself. So he likes to do things himself. That's not bad. He has worked in several offices in the church. His desire is to rightly divide the word of truth, amen, that everyone may be saved in God's kingdom. 
We are so happy to have these men and this man of God tonight to be bringing the word in this Prophetic Hope series. Before he comes, we are going to have the, an item of special music by Elder Ken Reeves. And then there are two other items. And then you'll hear the man of God tonight, Elder Carolina Ford. May God's blessings be upon him and upon us all as we listen. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. It's indeed a pleasure to be here to minister in song. And I, I pray that as I sing, that your heart should be lifted heavenward. And uh, those who don't know Christ, you be prepared to hear the word from God's man servant, Elder Carlo. And those who haven't made a decision, we make a decision tonight. The name of my song is Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Blessed assurance, you know Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Salvation purchased all of God, reborn of his spirit. I'm so thankful that I'm washed in his blood. And verse 2 says, perfect submission. Perfect delight, the visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy whispers of love and this is my story this is my song I'm praising my Savior I'm praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. Oh, I and waiting what about you looking above can't wait for his return what about you filled with his goodness lost in his love can you sing with me this is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This
This is my song. I'm praising my Savior all the day long. God bless you. take this opportunity to welcome all those who are watching us on YouTube, especially the McLaren and Pat in New York. We have our friends in England and those throughout the Caribbean. We want to welcome you to YouTube. We wish you were here, but it's good that we can be in fellowship. So as the Carlisle now comes and give us the word for the evening, we know that you will gain something and a closer relationship with God. Amen. Amen. We'll sing our theme song at this time. We have this hope.
Good evening to all. Let me say that one more time. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters. It's good to be found in a house of the Lord, what you say. Before I begin, I want to bow, invite you to bow your heads with me as we petition to God in prayer. Oh, Father, which art in heaven, I ask that you will cleanse me from all unrighteousness. We ask that as we open your word tonight, we ask that your Holy Spirit will open our hearts in Jesus' wonderful name. Let the church say, Amen. How to know the future? How to know the future? If there's one thing I want you to take away from the house of the Lord tonight is this. The future is unknown to man. The future is unknown to us, but is known to God. Between the 1950s and the 1990s, there was a popular psychic in Washington, D.C. Her name was Jean Dixon. Most of you probably weren't born yet. In 1958, she predicted a Democrat would win the 1960 presidential election and he would be killed while in office. President John F. Kennedy was the Democrat that was elected. He got assassinated. And ladies and gentlemen, Jean Dixon became famous. In 1962, she told Ronald Reagan he would be a president someday, but she didn't say when. In 1965, she gave a lecture at, a, um, at the Ambassador Hotel and was asked if Robert Kennedy would become the next president. Her response was, no, because of tragedy at this same hotel, her prediction was fulfilled to the letter. Jean Dixon, she made other predictions. She predicted that JFK's wife, that's John Fitzgerald Kennedy, JFK's wife, Jackie Kennedy, would never remarry, but she would, but she did many years later. In 1958, she also made this prediction, World War III would begin over the Chinese islands, but church, it never happened. She also said in 1967 that there will be a cure for cancer, but that discovery hasn't occurred yet. What I'm saying here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, friends of mine, Jean Dixon, she got it right sometimes, but most of the time she was wrong. She got it right sometimes, but most of the time she was wrong. But I want to say to you tonight, church, that when God predicts, his predictions always come to pass. What do you say? In Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And when he woke up, the dream was gone. The king had amnesia. So this is what Nebuchadnezzar did. He summoned his advisors. Daniel chapter 2, verses 2 and 3 tells us that his wise men were called in. The musicians, the sorcerers, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, just like Jean Dixon, were called in. And they couldn't tell him the dream. Ladies and gentlemen, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 28, 
This dream was about the future. The only thing the king had forgotten. The wise men failed to give the king the answers. He was told these words according to Daniel chapter 2 verses 10 and 11. There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. There is none other than that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not reflect. Put it another way. The wise men they were in short telling Nebuchadnezzar these words. There are things we don't know, but there are some things, sorry, there are things we know, but there are some things we don't know. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, what Nebuchadnezzar didn't know was that of all the gods of this world, there is only one God that knows the future. Ladies and gentlemen, verse 10, verses 10 and 11 of Daniel chapter 2 show us that the future is unknown to man. What Nebuchadnezzar didn't know was that God had a method of revealing his secrets. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 tells us that surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Brothers and sisters, God's method of revealing secrets are prophets and not psychics. God's method of revealing secrets are not the stargazers, but the morning star. What do you say? Yeah. Nebuchadnezzar wants answers, and Daniel wants answers as well. But the difference between the difference between the men is this: one consults human wisdom, and the other consults divine wisdom. Daniel and his three buddies later held a pre meeting. All night and by morning, God had answered. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say to you tonight, there's a God in heaven who hears and who answers prayer. That morning, Daniel had the good news for the king. There's a God in heaven who reveals secrets. There's a God in heaven that reveals the future and maketh them known to his people. Notice, my friends. Notice tonight, while the future is unknown to us, while the future is unknown to us, it is possible for us to know the future if God tells us. No astrologer tonight can reveal the future. I'm saying only God tonight can. No musician tonight, brothers and sisters, friends of mine, can unlock the secrets. Only God and God alone can. Now, Daniel gives the future in eight verses. How many verses, church? Eight verses. World future in eight verses. Verse 32, Daniel chapter 2, verse 32 tells us, this image's head was of fine gold. His breasts and arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass. Verse 33 says this, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Verse 34, it, see, it says, it reads, thou sawest till that a stone was cut out with a what? With a hand which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. Ladies and gentlemen, you can imagine this. The king is on the edge of his seat, just like me. 
I imagine he probably said, Danny boy, that's exactly what I saw in my dream. Don't forget this tonight, church friends of mine. Remember this, there's a God in heaven who reveals truth to us. Now Daniel says, verse 36, Daniel chapter 2, verse 36. What does it say? This is the dream. And we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. My brothers and sisters, according to Daniel chapter 2, verse 36, there is a God in heaven tonight who interprets his word. Are you listening to me? Not the pastor, but the God in heaven. Not the bishop, but God in heaven interprets his word. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, the Bible tonight and the Bible alone is its best interpreter. It also says in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 21, no prophecy, no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. And I thank God for that. Now, let me read Daniel chapter 2, verse 38. It says, Daniel gives the interpretation. He says this, and wheresoever the children of men dwell, Daniel chapter 2, to the text, probably got the wrong text. The text I'm looking for says this. Probably verse 39. Thou art his head of gold. Thou art his head of gold. Or thou art this head of gold. In other words, the head of gold tonight represents Babylon. There's no room for guess. No private interpretation. Verse 39 says this. And after thee shall arise another kingdom. Verse 39, and you know what, church? Let's read that. It says, and after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another third kingdom of brass which shall bear rule over all the earth. These kingdoms, friends of mine, were world kingdoms, world powers. Now the first kingdom was Babylon according to Daniel, according to God. And then Daniel chapter 5, verses 26 and 28, God did not leave room for guessing. I want to tell you tonight, brothers and sisters, that prophecy is not guesswork. Prophecy is history in advance. Daniel chapter 5 verse 26 says this, God has numbered thy kingdom. You remember the night when Belshazzar had his party and God crashed the party and God wrote his little paragraph. God didn't even send angel Gabriel. God came himself this time. And he wrote a little paragraph. God has numbered thy kingdom and finish it. Get this brothers and sisters tonight. I want to let you know that God sets up kings and the said God takes them down. The kingdom is divided. Verse 28. And given to the Medes and Persians. These two kingdoms are, are represents uh, the, the, the two arms, and the chest represents media Persia. Right to the same book, God doesn't leave room for guests. He gives the names of the kingdoms that follow Babylon. We thank God tonight for revealing his secrets. And verse 31 tells us, it says, Darius the Median, took the kingdom 
Daniel chapter 5, verse 31 tells us, Darius the Median took the kingdom. And in chapter 6, Daniel chapter 6, verse 28, the Bible says the reign of Cyrus the Persian. So we knew, we know for sure, Darius is the king of Media. And Cyrus is the king of Persia. Thank God tonight for revealing his word. God predicted it years before it happened and it came to pass the night of the party. And listen to this. 150 years before, God even named the leader. You imagine that? I would ask you a question tonight. Can any of you in here tell me who's going to be Barbados' next prime minister in about 10 to 15 years? None of us know. But God knows. God knows the future tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, God even told the prophet Isaiah how Cyrus would overthrow Babylon. What I'm saying tonight is this. God sees the end from the beginning. And I say hallelujah. God knows the events for next week. Do you know that? You don't know that, but my God knows. Prophecy tonight is world history in advance. Verse 39, just, we just read. And another third kingdom of brass. Daniel chapter 2, verse 39. It says, and after these shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another kingdom of brass, which shall and another third kingdom of Baras, which shall bear rule over the earth. So the first kingdom was Babylon. The second kingdom was Media Persia, the two arms. The third kingdom, Greece. Now, how do I know the third kingdom is Greece? I want to take you, I want you to remain in the same book. But let's go to another chapter. I remember that the, the book, when books were written, there were no, there were no, there were no paragraphs, there were no punctuation. The book was just as a whole. It was not divided into chapters. So let's go to Daniel chapter 8, verses 3 and 6. Daniel chapter 8, verses 3 and 6. It says here, then I lifted up my eyes. And saw, and behold, there stood before the river a ram which had two horns, and the two, what? Daniel chapter 8, verse 3. Let's read church. And the, the two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. And then it says, verse 4, and I saw the ram pushing westward and northward and southward so that no beast might stand before him. Neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and became great. Verse five, and as I was considering, behold, a he goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground and the goat had a notable horn be between the eyes. And verse 6 tells us, and he came to the ram that had two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. Ladies and gentlemen, verse 7 tells us, and I saw him came close unto the ram, and he was moved with color against him, and smote the ram. In other words, the eagle smote the ram, break his two horns, and there was no power in the ram to stand. Brothers and sisters, and it's like F, and it says there, look, but he cast him down to the ground. It's like F, the he go, body slammed the ram. That's what you call an action pack movie. Who's the ram? The Bible answers. Daniel chapter 8, verse 20 tells us who this ram was. 
It says the ram which thou sawest having two horns are what? Are the kings of Media and Persia. And verse 21 tells us the rough goat is the king of who? Mauritia. So the Bible doesn't leave room for guests tonight. So God sets up Babylon and dethrones Babylon. Greece did not rule forever because Daniel chapter 2, verse 40, tells us the fourth kingdom shall be as strong as iron. You notice the head is gold, the arms and the chest, silver, different metal. By the time we get to the third kingdom represents a different metal. And now the fourth kingdom, the iron legs, Rome. The fourth kingdom to rule the world was Rome. And these are four world kingdoms. Babylon was a world kingdom. Media Persia, world kingdom. Greece, world kingdom. Rome was a world kingdom. The Bible tells us this. Luke chapter 2 verse 1 reads, And it came to pass in those days, that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that, the, that all the world should be taxed. Rome was a world power run by the Caesars. Caesar was the Roman emperor. Brothers and sisters, I repeat, there's a God tonight in heaven that sets up kings and takes them down. In other words, God enthrones and God dethrones. Belshazzar was enthroned and he was dethroned. Darius was enthroned. Alexander of Greece was enthroned and Cyrus dethroned. The Caesars of Rome took the throne and the Alexander's generals were dethroned. What I'm saying tonight, brothers and sisters, is this. Empires come and empires go. But the book of Daniel still stands tonight. The Bible says, the grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. And I say hallelujah. Tonight, most of this prophecy is a matter of history. You may read the encyclopedia and see how well it sprays up with the Bible. You may read the history books. What I'm saying tonight, brothers and sisters, is this. Fulfilled prophecy gives authority to the word of God. And it gives authenticity to the word of God. See, the Quran does not stress prophecy, but the Bible does. The writings of Confucius does not do not stress prophecy, but the Bible tonight does. The prophecy of Daniel chapter 2, my brothers and sisters, provides proof that the Bible is the inspired word of God. We cannot throw away the Old Testament. You see, it has the book of Daniel in it. Because Jesus himself understood this Jesus according to Matthew chapter 24 verse 15 Jesus understood Jesus urged us in fact to understand the book of Daniel and I would rather believe my Lord than anyone else I declare tonight that there's a God in heaven who knows the future better than we know the past hallelujah in fact, speculation by man is no match for revelation by God. Here's what I'm saying. Hear what God said. I am God. Isaiah chapter 46, verses 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, chapter 46, verse 9 and 10. Here's what God says. He puts his neck on the line. He says, I am God. And there's none like me declaring the end from the beginning. My brothers and sisters, 
That's the kind of God that we serve tonight. He knows the future. He's the only one tonight that knows the future. And you and I can know the future. If he tells us, and you want to hear what? You want to hear something? He tells us about the future from his word. You just have to read it. Question is tonight, would a fifth world empire follow Rome? Daniel chapter 2, verses 41 to 43 says, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with murray clay, so we've now moved now from the iron legs, and now there's a, a mixture of iron and clay. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. But the Bible says, but they shall not cleave one to another. Even as iron is not mixed with clay. My brothers and sisters. Bible says that Rome the fourth kingdom shall be divided. You will notice the legs are iron. The toes are iron and clay. So Rome, even though Rome is divided tonight, it goes right down to the end. Rome is still there. Ain't gone away. It's just that Rome is not a world kingdom. For more than 500 years, Rome was strong as iron, but eventually Rome became divided true to God's word. These nations to this day remain divided like the 10 toes of the feet. You know how the, the toes of the feet are, they're separate. Seven of the 10 nations remain on the map of Europe tonight. What we are saying tonight, church, is this, divided Rome is Europe. Three of the ten were destroyed. Today, tonight, these nations are called England, France, Germany, Italy, Spain, Switzerland, and Portugal. Since the division, though, listen to this, since the division, powerful leaders have tried to unite the divisions of Rome. But you know what? All have failed. Charlie Mangi tried to unite Europe, but failed. Charles V tried, but failed. Napoleon tried, my brothers and sisters, friends of mine, but failed. Hitler tried, but failed. And you want to know why they failed? The reason is this. God's seven prophetic words still stands tonight. What I mean, Daniel chapter 2, verse 43 says, They shall not cleave one to another. True to God's word. Napoleon almost succeeded. Not what I said, Napoleon almost succeeded in conquering Europe. At the beginning of his military career, he boasted, In five years, I shall be master of the world. The conquest of Russia, Europe, the world, Napoleon said. Napoleon wanted one coinage and one government. He wanted all of these things. His troops were invincible. But brothers and sisters, while marching to, the, to Moscow for the Battle of Waterloo, his troops became trapped in the snow and the Russians destroyed them. Why would he stop? Why was, why was uh, Napoleon stop? He was no match for the word of God. Daniel 2.43, as he fled from the battle of Waterloo, he cried out and he said his word, God is too much for me. All the king's horses, and all the king's men couldn't put Rome back together again because God's seven prophetic words still stands. They shall not 
cleave one to another. In 1940 to 41, Hitler's German military might seem unstoppable. Hitler's army overran Eastern Europe, Europe, then plowed through France. Night after night, his bombers pounded London. 19, in March 1941, Hitler gave a speech. And I quote, seeing my people, we do not need anything from God. We do not ask anything from him, except that he may let us alone. We want to fight our own war with our own guns, before God. We want to gain our victory without the help of God. Brothers and sisters, friends of mine, Hitler believed he could conquer Europe. His predictions seem to be coming true. And who would dare challenge his claim? Hitler was strong. His army was strong. No one could stop Hitler. But God's seven prophetic words. What I'm saying here tonight, friends, events, world events, prophetic events may seem for a time to go contrary to God's word. But listen, when the dust settles, God's word will be established. And I say hallelujah. The Bible says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. And I say hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13, verse 31. The United Nations, note the name, United Nations has tried to unite countries all over the globe. But there have been more wars. The Bible says when they signed the peace treaties before the ink could dry, another war begins. True to God's word. The European Union, notice the title, the European Union had a common currency, has a common currency. The euro, but Britain is not with that. In Germany, it's the German mark. In France, it's the franc. In Britain, it's the pound. And once again, brothers and sisters, friends of mine, the prophecy's verdict comes ringing down the cord of time, leaving the nation still divided. Thou shall not cleave one to another. Europe has even tried marriages, intermarriages. Daniel chapter 2 verse 43 says this, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Some say, you know, relatives don't quarrel. But that ain't true. Someone said that every, if everyone in Europe were related, then there would be no misunderstanding leading to war. Relatives don't quarrel. I think recently we had a we had a murder. Or sometime back there were two brothers, one killed the other. So you know that's a joke. Relatives don't quarrel. And that too failed. But the word of God still stands tonight. What's next on the agenda, church? Daniel chapter 2, verses 43 and 44. And it reads, and whereas thou saw if iron mix with Murray clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. But verse 44 is a key part, is a key text. It says, in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. My brothers and sisters, 
the kingdom of God that will be set up will be eternal, will be everlasting, will be indestructible. And I say hallelujah. Tonight, we are living in the toenails of time. We are living in the toes of the statue of Daniel chapter 2. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15 says this. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. And church, he shall reign forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, tonight, Daniel chapter 2 has been almost fulfilled. History has followed the prophecy of Daniel chapter 2 and will continue to do so. God doesn't lie and God keeps his promises. I may break a promise to you, but not my God. The fourth the four world kingdoms to rule had been predicted and fulfilled. The fifth world kingdom, God's kingdom, the stone kingdom is yet to come. We are living in these days. And church, we can trust the Bible about the fifth kingdom to come. The dream of Daniel chapter two is certain and its interpretation is sure. Tonight, friends, I declare that this Bible can be trusted with the past. I declare that the word of God can be trusted with the past. And we can also trust God's word tonight about the things to come. And I say hallelujah. Earthly kingdoms will pass away but God's kingdom will be everlasting. Jesus tonight will be the next world ruler, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The rock cut out before hands is the only kingdom that shall last. Tonight, we can have hope because tomorrow is in God's hands who has been guiding history for many years, for centuries. Are you looking at the statue tonight? Or are you looking for the rock? Are you looking at the earthly kingdoms? Or are you looking for the heavenly kingdom? A city whose builder and maker is God. Friend, recognizing that God is in full control of earthly events. Don't be scared what President Putin does. God is in control. Whenever God is ready, God will put the brakes on him. Thus far and no further. God is in control of earthly leaders and earthly events. Are you willing to let him control your life? If that's your desire, will you stand for prayer? Jesus said these words, and now I have told you before it come to pass, that when it come to pass, ye might believe. Bless more as Father in heaven. We thank you for your word. We thank you for making your word clear to our hearts tonight. We thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach your word. We know that your coming is nearer now than before. Lord, most importantly, help us to be ready. Help us to watch. Help us to be ready and help us to, and help others to be ready and stay ready. 
In Jesus' wonderful name, let the church say, Amen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, the dream of Daniel chapter 2 is certain and the interpretation is sure. God bless you tonight. What a powerful word from God's manservant. You want to know the future? Stay with God. I want to encourage us as we started tonight. I am sure that we would have enjoyed the message. And I am sure that as this continue, that there will be more. And we often say, you get better as you go on. So let us look forward to the messages. Tomorrow night, we will hear Elder Duane Farrell, and he will tell us all about the great controversy. Let us thank God for his word and that we can rely on his word because his word is true. We will now close with our part in him, number 546 from the Old hymnal 546, the coming king is at the door.
peace be with us. May he guide and direct us this night. And as we follow him, may we rest assured with the hope that we will see him in the earth maybe. Amen. Amen. A good night to everyone. See you tomorrow night, God's willing, where we will continue this series, Prophetic Hope. Yeah, hope safety.